We've looked at the main use case of JavaScript template literals, also called template strings, which is smooth string concatenation. You can actually provide your own custom function before a template string to completely customize the interpolation, and this is called a tagged template. Here we have two simple variables, one for a person pointing to Mike and one for the age pointing to the number 28. We can put them in a simple string by using template literals and no surprise, the output will match what we expect. We can actually put an identifier or honestly, any expression that evaluates to a function before a template literal to create what is known as a tagged template. In syntax terms, the identifier that we are using over here is called the tag function. We define it just like any other function in JavaScript and there are two key parameters for a tag function. The first is an array of strings, which contains the string portions of the tagged template. So for our example, it will contain the person, the age, and the full stop strings. And then the remaining parameters to our tag function will contain the expressions that get passed in. And here we are consolidating all of them into a single array by using the JavaScript rest parameter as indicated by the triple dots. So for our example, it will be an array containing the person string and the age number. Note that the original type of the expression is preserved. So since age is just a number, we get a number, we do not get a string version of that number. Anything that we return from this function will be the result of the tagged template. As an example, we can simply concatenate the strings and the expressions the same way the built-in function would do. And if we log out the final tagged result, it should match what we got in the simple version. And no surprise, if we run this code, the contents of the simple and the tagged are the same final string. Let's take a deeper look at the parameters of tagged templates to get a deeper understanding of the strings and the expressions that get passed in as the arguments. We create three simple variables, x, y, and z, 10, 20, and 30, that we will be using for our expressions. And then we create a simple tag function, which we will use to debug the strings and the expressions that get passed in. Let's run our first experiment. We pass in a simple string containing three expressions, x, y, and z, what do you think will be the strings and what do you think will be the expressions? What might surprise you that in addition to the three expressions, we will also get passed in four empty strings. That is because we still have four empty strings that surround these three expressions. To simplify it further, if we only have a single expression, we essentially have two empty strings that surround that expression. Additionally, all expressions get evaluated before they get passed in. So if we have an expression x plus y plus c, we will actually get passed only one expression, which is the final result of this, which is 60. And of course, at this point, it should make obvious sense that if you only have an empty string, you will still get passed a string. And since this string has no expressions, the expressions array is going to be empty. Let's implement the same functionality as a built-in template string that works with any number of arguments. And this will give us the basic structure to easily create custom tag functions. We create this tag function called interpolate that takes the strings and the expressions. And then we simply use string.reduce to generate the final result. We use the strings array because as we saw, we are guaranteed at least one item. In each iteration of the reduce, we will get back the currently computed result, the string that we are currently looking at and the index for that string. As we know, we may or may not have any further expressions to look at. So to make sure, we check if i is less than the expressions.length. And if it is, we have an expression and we pick it up from the expressions array. Otherwise, for the expression, we default to an empty string. Finally, for the updated result, we will have the previous result plus the current string plus the current expression. And to kick everything off, we provide an initial seed value of an empty string. And this gives us exactly the same functionality as if we had never used this interpolate function. And to demonstrate that, we create two simple variables, pineapple and capsicum, and generate two strings, the first one without using the tag, and then another one using this tag. And now if we run this code, you can see that the output from both of the calls is exactly the same. The difference here is that now we have a framework to do any customization that we want to. For example, we can turn any of the past in expressions to the uppercase equivalent with a simple call to two uppercase. And now if you run this code, we get pineapple and capsicum in capitals with our custom tag function. The return value from a tagged template function doesn't have to be a string. And really tagged templates open up a whole avenue for creating custom domain specific languages. As you might know, JavaScript does have a star star operator also called the exponent. So two to the power of four is 16. But what if we wanted to use the caret for the same purpose? 
Unfortunately, the caret operator does exist within JavaScript and it's a bitwise XOR, but let's be fancy and create our own custom DSL in which caret has the same meaning as star star, that is power. We create our own calculate tag function which takes the strings and the expressions, and then within the strings that get passed in, we replace any existence of the caret with the star star, and this allows us to pass the final resulting string directly to JavaScript eval function to get the evaluated numeric result. So for our simple example where we have a pointing to 2 and b pointing to 4, if we calculate a caret b, we should get back the result 16, and indeed that is what we see in the program output. The domain specific nature of tagged templates is extremely powerful and used quite effectively in modern JavaScript ecosystems, for example GraphQL and LitHTML. As always, thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.